Hi, I'm Reverend Brian Sharp, pastor of Grace Christian Fellowship. You're listening to Kingdom News Now. It's time to testify. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love there's no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love Praise the Lord. Welcome to Kingdom News Now. We're so glad that you joined us tonight for another program that we have lined up for you. I'm Jack Dilday right here in the studios here in Poplar Bluff. Amen. What a beautiful day it has been. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And we are so glad that you've joined here with us tonight, amen, for this program. We've got a special program lined up. We've been talking throughout the month of August uh, a little bit about uh, how to overcome difficult times in your life and and uh, all of those things. We sh shared a little bit last week along those lines, and tonight uh, we've got a special, one of probably the very most special guest that we've ever had on this program. Amen. The most beautiful guest we've ever had, I can tell you. Amen. My beautiful and lovely wife amen miss lisa amen it's so good to have you on the program tonight we don't ever get to do this very often together it's glad i'm glad to be here tonight <laughs> sometimes you swell things up it makes it hard to live up to what you say but but uh, i am glad to be here tonight <laughs> amen we're we're glad that you're here like i said a lot of times we don't hardly ever get to, in fact i don't know it's been a long long time since we've done a program together uh, but we're glad to be able to do it tonight uh, with you. And we may actually be doing a couple of them throughout the month, uh, the month of August and, and such, talking about some things and kind of gearing up to certain things coming up in September. And so we just want to share some word with you tonight. We want to share some things with you tonight that I believe will help change your life. I believe will transform your life. Amen. And, and so we've got some more testimonies we're going to share with you uh, here in a little bit. In fact, that's kind of what we're all about. That's what Kingdom News Now is all about, is testimonies and, and uh, sharing some good news of what God is doing. One of the most powerful things that we can do as a Christian is to have the opportunity to share our testimony with those around us Amen. and to share all the things that God's done for me. You know, Jack, I, I think about all of the things that he's done, the times he's delivered me, the right. peace that I live with, uh, and, and all of the darkness that he brought me out of. And I think about how can I repay the mm -hmm. Lord for everything he's done? And there simply is no, There's way. no way. There simply is no way that you can repay God for all of his goodness and his kindness. But the one thing that I can do is to share his testimony and to lift up his name. I want him to be famous Amen. in all of the nations. Right Amen. now, people run down the name of Christ. They, they resist those who, who want to walk in their Christian faith, even in in our nation, it's a challenge right now to live out Amen. your faith sometimes. That's right. But I know the things God's done for me. Amen. I can't testify about what he's done for someone else, can't testify about what he's done for you, but I definitely know all the things that he's done for me, and I am glad to have an opportunity to lift up the heart of someone else who's maybe going through something that I've already proven God and saw that he is a faithful, faithful God. Amen. That he will do the things that his promises say. The word of God says that his promises are yea and, and amen. 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 And so every one of those promises I can claim for my life as long as my heart is committed to Christ, I'll never be good enough to deserve That's any right. of those promises. Come on. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. I have the opportunity to, to be, receive blessing Amen. from the Father that is beyond what I deserve. Amen. And I can receive that, and then I can share that message with the world that God loves them and that those promises were there because he loved Amen. them and wanted to make a difference in their life. And there is something 
supernatural about sharing what Christ has done. Amen. Something Amen. happens when someone shares the goodness of God. Amen. There's power in those words as they just begin to share their testimonies. They begin to share what Christ has done for them. I believe there's power that, that, that comes out of their mouth with those words. If you look back at the church and how many thousands of years it's been since Christ first shared the truth about who mm -hmm. he was and what his purpose was in the earth, word of mouth is Amen. the only way that you and I would be getting the gospel today. And I, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate of honoring those who have brought the gospel to us. Sometimes there's a generational gap in the way that people want to worship in, in an older generation, a younger generation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we con we contemplate how the worship setting should be differently between the ages. But the truth is, even as a younger Christian, without those who've gone on before me, without the hymns right. that really f cause them to fall in love with the Lord and them to know him in a real intimate way mm -hmm. without all of those things that I maybe don't understand or it might not be my favorite right. song right. without those things I would not have received the gospel Amen. without the sacrifice uh, of all the way back without Amen. the sacrifices that have been made men and women have given their lives yes to testify the truth of God's word. Yes. It is nothing short of a miracle that the word of God is, is printed on the page for us to pick up and read every day. Men and women gave their lives to transcribe that word into yes. a form that, that one native tongue could could read and another native tongue could read and, and that it would the translations are all across the world. Amen. Because people paid the price Amen. to right. give their testimony and to fight for the truth of God's word. Amen. And so we know the value of that. That's right. We know the value of that. And that is the reason that Kingdom News Now was in our heart all, all the way back from, from years and years ago. Mm -hmm. God began to speak to us about how important it is that the truth of God's word be put forth in testimonies that right. it's real, that it's powerful, that it's for today. Right. You know, a few years back, we were sitting on a cruise line. We were on a Disney cruise that we had won. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting with a couple whose uh, the woman's mother was at home with cancer. Right. And I was sharing with her this idea that I had about collecting the testimonies of people who had been through specific types of problems, issues and problems right. and gathering those testimonies and putting them in a place where people could go in the middle of the night, where people could go to a website, where they could, could check in and see Amen. real testimonies of real people who had endured their this was, same circumstances. This was like back in 2009. In if I remember right, it was right around 2009. At that time, I just thought it needed to be a, a website. Right. We right. really didn't know the fullness of everything God was going to say. And, and I might have been a little bit afraid of him <laughs> saying I had to get in front of a camera. <laughs> that might have been part of the reason that came later. I wasn't quite ready for that back then. But she said to me, oh, the value that would be for her mother who sits day after day taking chemo, yes. taking radiation, to hear the real testimony of someone who's been where she is, Amen. who's walk that walk Amen. and seen the way that God was faithful to them all the way Amen. through that process. And since that time, we have endeavored everywhere that we've gone to encourage people to share their testimony, yes. to make sure that we lift up the name of the Lord and the, that we honor him by sharing the Amen. words uh, with other people who are, are going through some you know, some. Difficult times. And what we have to understand is that that he gets the glory. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that we testify of our own of our own thing, our own, our own goodness, or or anything that we have done for ourselves. But it's things that we can't do for ourselves. Right. You know, we can't raise ourselves up off of deathbed. You know, we can't. Uh, you know, we can't heal our bodies. We can't cause things to happen like that. But but he can, and so he gets the glory out of our testimonies. You know, and and that's you know that's the very thing I believe that helps us to overcome 
those obstacles in our life, uh, you know, and we use this scripture a lot around here, and that's Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's the, and I mentioned, I know last week on the program, but, but that's how uh, you overcome, you, that's how you overcome the enemy. Number one, by the blood of the Lamb, you receive Christ as your Savior. You yeah. accept the blood of Christ upon your life, and it changes who you are. Amen. And then you begin to testify to people, this is what Christ did for me. This is the life that I used to live, but I don't live that life no more. And I couldn't change that if I wanted to. That's right. You know, it wasn't something that I just chose, well, I, I'm not going to go out and drink no more. I'm not going to go out and party no more. I'm not going to go do this or go do that or whatever and live like the world. Amen. But it, it was something, it's something that, that Christ did for us that you know and i say this a lot of times from the pulpit you've heard me say it many times that that uh you know you don't go somewhere when you get saved you don't you don't not go somewhere that you used to go because a preacher told you you couldn't go there but you go there because you don't go there because you don't want to go there right you know there's something on the inside of you that changes you that you don't want to do that no more and that's the blood of jesus and that's his love and so we began to share his testimony and that's what kingdom news now is all about is sharing testimonies now we have ministers come on here from time to time and we might preach a word from time to time and maybe a great word a great message uh that god has laid on our hearts sometimes but but the majority of what you will see on kingdom news now is people sharing their personal testimony just everyday people like you and i sharing our testimonies of what christ has done in our life you know, that's what we're all about here at Kingdom News. And, and we believe there's something, what Lisa was just saying, we believe there's something about the spoken word uh, that, that activates the power of God in and around us. When we speak what he has already done for us right. to someone who doesn't know him, and we begin to share the goodness of God, that activates the power of God into their life, into their situation, to let them know there is hope. To that's let right. them know that there is a, a, a way out, you know, whether that's through a, tra a tragedy or whether that's through a sickness or illness or, or whether that's just through somebody at the end of their rope wanting to give up on life. Whatever it is, that there is life, there is hope in the Word of God. And when we begin to share those words, we begin to share our testimonies uh, with someone else, and you begin to share your testimony with someone else, then that activates the power of God in you and does something supernatural in that situation right there. Yeah, man, I believe that. Now, we've got a couple testimonies going to come up here pretty soon, uh, pretty quick here in just a few moments. But, but we know, and I want to, I wanna, again, I want to kind of go back and pick up where I left off a little bit last week. I think I even closed the program out last week with, with these lines, uh, something along these lines, and that is that we know that God created the world by his spoken word. He brought the world into existence. Let there be light. And there was light, just his spoken word. Uh, the world was framed by the word of God, by, his, by him speaking. He created the visible world out of nothing. And, and what God speaks comes to pass. And over and over in Genesis chapter 1, we see the words, and God said. And God said. And, and it's in there several times. And whatever God says becomes reality. But not only him, but once because we are created in his likeness. We are created in his image. We have the same power in our voice, in our voice, in our words that he has, that when we speak those words, they come to pass. Amen. You know, I, I know, again, I mentioned last week, but I want to mention it again because we all need to hear it over and over, and that is death and life are in the power of the tongue. Right. You know, and, and those words are powerful. And, and so it's important that we share our testimony. It's not just words. It's not just something to, for somebody to pat us on the back about or to pat you on the back. It's, but it's, it's important and it's powerful that you share what Christ has done for you. Now, I know many of you watching this program tonight, I know that you are born again, bought by the blood. You are a child of God on your way to heaven. But it's been a while since you've shared that with somebody. And we're telling you tonight, you need to go share it with somebody. You need to let somebody know you know Jesus Christ and how great he's been to you and the change he made in your life. And that's what we're here to tell you tonight. Amen. That you need to share your testimony somewhere. If 
you've got a great testimony, and I don't do this every week, but I, I just feel prompted right now to do this. But if you've got a great testimony that God has done something great in your life, I want you to call us. Uh, you can call the number that's on the screen, 573-840-8888. Email us at kingdomnewsnow at gmail.com. Contact us somewhere on Facebook or something and let us know that, and we will we will do our best to try to figure out what we need to do to get you on the program to share what Christ has done in your life. That's what this is all about. That's what, you know, God uh, just just dropped it in, in actually in Lisa's heart, uh, even earlier before 09, way back in 05, I think it was, 04, 05, uh, back there. And, and we have shared this a time or two over the last couple of years, but not very often, you know, that, that he began to share things in her heart uh, to her about gathering those testimonies. And even early on in 05, you was thinking maybe a magazine. Mm-hmm. And, and then as, as we kind of put that on the back burner, then in 09, amen, we began, you began thinking of a website uh, or something online. You know, never really at that point did it ever cross our mind to be in front of a television camera. But that whole idea began during Hurricane Katrina mm-hmm. because everyone was glued to the television. Our hearts were broken with the people who were suffering, with the lives that were were taken it, it was a horrific time but it was a season that the news shifted if you mm-hmm. will what was traditional we would watch the news at a certain time of day but during that time the news played on a lot of our channels just continuously right, right. for days and days during that time i couldn't pull myself away from the tv and most of the people that i know couldn't either I'm, I have a, a heart of a prayer warrior, and, and just to see that and not just stay focused there and continue to pray during that time was impossible for me. Yeah. But the more that I watched those tragedies and I heard the news for weeks, what seemed like weeks and weeks on end, the more that my heart began to long for a publication or a broadcast mm-hmm. of something that would would encourage the hearts of people. Amen. There was so much sadness, so much brokenness, right. so many hurting people that my heart longed to be able to communicate that God's love was with them, that God was able to minister to the needs. You know, God never said to us that we would have no trouble. That's right. But he did say that he would go with us always, Amen. that he would never leave us and that he would never forsake us. If we cry out to him, that he will hear our voice Amen. when we repent and we ask him, God, come into this situation. You see, he's a gentleman. He won't come and get involved That's unless right. you invite That's him. That's right. He won't force himself. But if you invite him into your life, he promises you that he'll never leave you. Yes. He'll never forsake you. And I so long to get out of my comfort zone, my little circle, and reach out to people with the love of Christ all the way back then. I wanted to come up with a way. And, and as the Lord dealt with my heart, I started to say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not educated in a way that, that I could go out and, and be a journalist. Right. I, I don't know what you're speaking to me. I just dreamed about this day and night for a long time. I'm not a journalist. I, don't, I love to talk to people. I love to, to get people's histories and tell a story. But he just began to birth a seed in me at that time. Amen. And as the years progressed and, and our ministry shifted and made changes, this opportunity Amen. was a precious opportunity to us. Whenever uh, our ministry shifted, the one thing that we knew that we knew that we knew yes. God was still speaking to our hearts about was to broadcast the news of God's goodness yes. and his love and his hope for this generation and so that's why we're here with kingdom news now and we pray and trust that it's blessing your life in some way amen you know you 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 talk about that and 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 my mind automatically goes back to a particular conversation that we had we're talking almost three years ago uh now and uh our ministry had changed and and we was no longer pastoring and and we knew just what you said we knew that we wanted to continue uh to to share the gospel uh, on the airwaves and and such and and in fact we were so adamant about it you and 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 this is what is so miraculous about this <laughs> you were say you told me i'm willing to set up a studio in our living room in our house if that's what we have to do 
And I'm thinking, okay, God, this has got to be you. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be you speaking this, amen, for her to be that adamant about it. So so we knew that. And, and so we trust that you, you're enjoying the programs each week with the testimonies and the things, the ministry and such as it continues on. We want, we're going to take a break in a moment. But first, let me, let me set you up. Let me set this up for you. Amen. We've got a, a, a young lady uh, a testimony that we shared probably one of one of the first few that we really did when we first went on the air with Kingdom News Now, uh, who had uh, given birth to a child at 23 weeks, mm -hmm. I believe it was when it was, and uh, of course they didn't expect the, the baby to live. And in fact, we had prayed for this girl and this baby for the whole community. Was the whole praying community was, for this was praying exactly for for Madison and, and her child, and and uh, we had never met them, we didn't know them, but it was all throughout all of Poplar Bluff of churches praying for this little girl, and and I say little girl, she was a young girl, uh, and her child and and such that had been born at 23 weeks. They didn't expect him to live. In fact, her life was at risk as well. And so anyway, we found Madison Russell. And we found Jace Russell, and we did an interview with them back probably two years ago now, probably, I think it was actually two years this past June. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, obviously because of the prayers of the people, I believe that I'm talking, it just spread like wildfire and people began to pray. Jace pulled through. And uh, I'm going to let Madison just share just a few minutes of that with you t tonight. And I trust you're going to be blessed. Her sharing her testimony of a tough time in her life. And so let me just tell you, if you're going through a tough time in your life right now, don't give up. There's people praying for you. I know there is. because I, I know there's people praying for you because we're praying for you. Amen. We pray for you on a regular basis. We may not call your name, but we pray for you as you watch this program each week. So listen to Madison for just a few moments, and we're going to be right back in just a moment. Uh, I started having a sharp pain in my side, and so we started heading home. We got halfway home. And I, I got incredibly sick to my stomach, and I felt like I was just going to pass out. So we immediately turned around and went to the hospital, and my doctor called me as soon as we were pulling into the emergency room. And I kind of told her what was going on. She, just like I did, didn't really seem concerned, said, go in, they'll probably check me out. And right. if, they need me, if they need her, they'll call her, because she was the doctor on call that weekend. And that's here in Poplar Bluff. Mm -hmm. And so we went in. They... Uh, took me up to a room, they hooked me up to a monitor, they said I was having like mild contractions, very, I mean, I didn't even know I was having contractions. Wow. Um, they said that they had took some blood work, so they were going to wait for the results of that to come um, to figure out what might be causing it. They said sometimes a UTI would cause it, um, so they were just going to wait on that, and then they'd, they'd come back in there. Well, in the meantime, they had other plans, <laughs> and uh, my the only people that were there were my husband and my friend that had come to pick me up, and she's actually a nurse that works there, and she so she had come up to the hospital also, and they were the only two in the room. Um, Jace's heart rate dropped on the screen, and she saw it and started running out, and as she was running out, they had all seen it at the nurse's station, and they were all running in. Um, I was to the point where I was uh, I was about to pass out at this time. I felt my eyes roll back. I couldn't open my eyes. Um, I was freezing cold, but I could feel sweat just balling up around my mouth. Um, I, I don't even remember them running in. I don't remember her running out. And I opened my eyes enough just to, for a split second to see the, she had wheeled in an um, ultrasound machine, and she rolled it across the base of my belly, and she just looked at me, and she said, we're going into emergency C-section. I remember when they wheeled me down the hall, they opened the doors to the surgery room, and I instantly felt a calming sensation. And I've, I'm not one to ever say that I've experienced God talking to me, but right. that day he did. He said, it's going to be okay. They called it a placenta abruption. It's where you're out of nowhere. Your placenta, they, your placenta can tear, mm -hmm. and that always causes problems. But the placenta abruption is where there's no tear, there's no problems, until the second it happens, and it literally just rips away from the uterine wall. And we didn't know it, but I started bleeding internally instantly, and my life was just as much in danger as his life. And nobody besides my friend who was a nurse right. knew that at that time. 
In fact, when the pediatrician and the doctor came out and was talking to my husband, I mean, he, he said, he said, kind of stopped and was like, you mean I could have lost wow. both of them? Wow. So we had, he was born weighing one pound, 11 ounces. Wow. So. My goodness. Yeah. Tiny, tiny, tiny. little guy. How, how, <laughs> how big was he, really? Oh, uh, he was, his whole body was no wider than my, than my palm, than that right there. The first time I held him, he was two weeks old the first time I held him, and he fit he fit right here. I held him right here. He was about goodness. this wide. Wow. His finger, his leg was as longer, obviously, but it was the same size as my was, finger. I hold it up to me. This was his first, not his first onesie, but the first size, and this was actually incredibly too big for him when we... At one month old. Mm -hmm. Wow. Way too big for him. We are back here at Kingdom News with Jace. Russell and his mom, Madison Russell, and we have a special little guest we want to introduce to you. We want to introduce Jace to you. Jace is the baby we've been talking about. Uh, he is. He was born June 28th, which almost he's almost uh, coming up on that first birthday. I would just tell you to turn it over, because if you worry about it and stress about it, you're getting nowhere. I could have gone every day to that hospital and just sat there and moped and cried and made it the worst situation, how I didn't want to be there, I didn't want to have to go through that, it's not fair, but I was put in that situation and I gave it to him, he told me it'd be okay and I Amen. believed that and so I just made the most of it and I've had people say to me time and time again, I just, I just can't believe you stay so strong in your faith, I'm like I don't know how people do it without faith. Hi, my name is Liberty Cobb. You're watching Kingdom News Now, and it's time to testify. Welcome back to Kingdom News Now. I told you that Madison Russell has a tremendous testimony, amen, of the power of God in her life, amen. And, and it was by her own words that she shared with us that night of trusting God and having faith in God and believing that he was going to bring her through and her, her, her son bring him, her son safely through as well, amen. But also the prayers of the people, they rallied around her, people that didn't even know them. In fact, we seen Madison just a few weeks ago, her and her husband and son, and he is, a, I'm talking, he is a, a big old boy. Big old boy, <laughs> that's right. He is a big old boy he's right now. Boy. And he's two or three years old and, yeah. and such, and God has just done a tremendous miracle in their life. Amen. And so, so you know, it's important that we share our testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, we called Madison and said, hey, would you come share your testimony? Only because we had heard of the story that was that was uh, transpired in her life. And and people had shared with us that, uh, you know, uh, of, of her needing prayer. And so we called her and she, she came and and such. And so we're glad that she did. But but I want to tell you tonight that it's important that you share your testimony as well. It's important that you share what Christ has done. Maybe you don't have that, that what we would term as that tremendous or great of testimony. If you are born again, that's the greatest testimony you can have. Because you have been, you've been transferred from the, the kingdom of darkness, translated, the word says, I believe in Colossians, you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And that's the greatest testimony you can have. Amen. 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 God, God has given each one of us a testimony. That's right. No matter no matter how big or how small, just that that experience, that encounter, for me, just to know that he was exactly what he said he was, that his promises were exactly what they said. Many times people try to say that the Bible is just a book of fables. Mm -hmm. But once you've experienced Christ yes. and you know the power of God and you know how many times God's healed my body, Amen. how many times he's taken my mind when I was racked with depression or, or tormented with, with fear over something and brought peace Amen. and healing. No one can tell me that's not real. You couldn't convince me of that. There's Amen. no way that's right. That's right. that you could convince me because it's too late to tell me that. Yes. God has showed his faithfulness to me, and I'm not anybody. I'm not, I'm not someone who, who has a great anointing or who, who has a great following. I'm just a child of God, and that is an awesome testimony Amen. in itself. He is Amen. so real. So many times over the years, Jack, God has proven himself to me. There have been times when, 
when I was longing for something or when something was on my mind that I wanted and sometimes not even verbalizing mm -hmm. that. And all of a sudden, God would bring those things into my life, and I would know that it was just like just like you picking a bouquet of flowers for me because you knew what I loved and you knew I would enjoy that. He, by the same token, knows our heart Amen. better than anyone yes. else knows it. Yes. And he knows how to bring those things into our life that confirm to us Amen. that he's real and he's there. Amen with us we have some powerful yes. testimonies to share tonight and the next testimony that we're about about to oh bring my. to you is just almost so great that it's difficult to believe i know that when this began uh, we heard that this brother had had been in a coma mm -hmm. was in the hospital there were no good reports for days and days and it just seemed to be getting worse his little wife was so faithful at his side, praying and believing. Yes. They had called in uh, folks to come in and lay hands on him and anoint him with oil and pray, and they were believing. And nothing that the doctors were saying Amen. was hopeful at all. No, nothing. In fact, it came down to the point where the hospital was saying, we're going to have to make a decision yes. about pulling this ventilator off of him. And his little wife just stood by him Amen. and continued to pray, continued to pray. Amen. And I know we were in a prayer closet praying for him yes. the Sunday before God on really did Tuesday, this miracle. Yes. Um, on Sunday morning, I, I looked at the girls in the prayer room and I said, I believe that he is going to be out of the hospital by the end of this week. Now, that was something I felt in my spirit while I was praying. It sounded just Impossible. Crazy. It sounded like that, yes. that. Well, that's great hope. But it yeah. was something the Spirit was speaking to me, and I was not surprised at all. I rejoiced Amen. whenever we heard the good news that God did a mighty miracle in Bart's life. Amen. Bart Smith was a 36-year-old bodybuilder. Great health, no, not a sick day, nothing going on in his body. And he preached one night. In fact, some of you may know Bart Smith. He was a manager up here at Ozark Fitness for a long time here in town. But he's moved on to Sykeston, opened up his own fitness center there. And he had worked hard all day that day. He preached on a Friday night and, and outside under a tent and very hot and conditions and, and such. And, and he preached hard on Friday night. He came home, wanted to sit up, stay up a little bit and pray. And Jody, his wife, uh, went on to bed. And, and make a long story short, we can't share the whole thing, but, but I can kind of brief you a little bit. Uh, she got up Saturday morning, and he was in bed and could not wake him up. And she tells a little bit about that in, this, in these clips here. And... Uh, uh, it, it goes on to the point, all the way to the point of of he is in the hospital and actually in a in a medical induced coma. He went to into a coma, but then he started coming out. Of course, when he come out, he started fighting and pulling tubes, and they medicated him to go back into the coma again. And all of a sudden, he wakes up. And we're gonna let Jody share with you tonight, Barton Jody Smith, a man from Sykeston, a man, and we'll be back here in just a few moments. Hello, you know, he, I was trying to ask him what's going on, and he uh, he never moved. And his hands and stuff were kind of blue, just his arms. And I was like, well, he's cold. So I covered him up, and I got up, and I seen the towel, and I seen his clothes laying there. So I knew sometime in the middle of the night he took a shower. My son, he even went in there and tried to wake him up, and he told me, he said, Mom, Bart still ain't getting up. I said, well, I'm going to go in there. I'm getting him up this time. So I go in there, and, I mean, I had a he had a gallon of water sitting by his bed because he drinks a lot of water so i dumped it on him and he still <laughs> never moved so i right. call his mom i'm like get here as soon as you can because i don't want to call the ambulance if he's still asleep but i think there's okay. something wrong it wasn't three minutes she was there he called the ambulance and the ambulance you know they got there they pushed us out of the way said he had no oxygen um and called susan hartle she's from bernie and every time i need something i call her because she tells me exactly what to say and she said jody um you have power over your husband you go in there you don't know what's going on you speak life and nothing but life Amen. and rebuke death Amen. and she said if they don't let you back there you go back there yes. 
And I did. So I walked right back there, walked through the emergency room, the nurses yelling, you know, acting like I was just this nutcase. So I go back in this room, and I see them. They're all standing back there, and the door's, you know, kind of cracked. They got the machine with the pads on it, so I knew right. they lost them. Right. And um, the nurse, she seen me. She pushed me out of the way, and she said, I'll have the doctor come talk to you. And I said, I want to know what's going on right now. And she said, he's not going to make it. She said, is his family here? And I said, yes. So after for a minute, the doctor come, uh, explain to us that he, how much, what, that they, he was so confused because, you know, not, he, he's 36 years old, healthy, mm -hmm. and then just doesn't wake up. Right. And the doctor said, if you have anyone else as close to him, um, call them. And I said, well, what, what do you mean? And uh, he said, well, there's nothing really much we can do. I said, did you just say that there's nothing much you can do? And he said, yes, ma'am. We were fixing to leave, and Wayne put his hand on his knee and uh, said a little prayer for him and told him, and he said, said, now, I know, you know, you might not be able to hear us, but the doctor says that you can. He said, but we love you, and I'm not ever going to stop praying for you. And when he did, Bart opened his eyes, went back there. They were, as soon as I, I mean, it wasn't even until I got back to the room Bart pulled the ventilator out of his mouth. So they're freaking out. They're telling me all the, what they're going to have to do. So they go and they put this temporary mask on him so he can breathe. But his oxygen is just like dropping. I'm just watching the numbers. It went from like 92 to 80. You know, it's in the 70s. And I, but he starts talking. And he, te he says, I can breathe. And I said, Bart, you think you can, but you can't. I said, you have to stay calm because these doctors said if you don't stay calm, we're gonna have, they're going to have to come in here right now, and they're going to you know, they're gonna have to do something because you're on all the oxygen. I'm trying to explain uh. to him. He's not listening. And uh, he pulls me down, and he says, you know better than this. You know that Jesus is our healer, and I shouldn't be here. I walk in there, and the nurses just look at me, and they're just so amazed. They said when they went to take that mask off, to put another, a BiPAP is what it's called, they were going to put that on there until they could do the surgery for the ventilator to put back in there, that his oxygen level just kept going up, and he was fine. And he was, Come he said directly. he wanted to sit up, so they put him up in a chair, and he's just sitting there, he's got the little <laughs> oxygen in his nose. <laughs> I walk in, and he's just smiling away at me. Friday at 7 o'clock, he got his own room, regular room, wow. out of the ICU. Praise God. Off 100% ventilator, maximum oxygen, Within two hours, needed nothing. Coming, coming directly out from under a medicated coma. Coma, yes. Preaching Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. I Amen. come out preaching. Preaching Jesus all Christ. the nurses. The nurses come around. I was like, I had an anointing on me so strong because of where I'd been in the spiritual realm. Amen. I was saying, God loves you, and just when I when I would hear myself say it, I could see it touch him. And Hi, I'm Naomi Deaton, and you're watching Kingdom News Now, and it's time to testify. My goodness! Wow, I told you what. What an awesome testimony from Barton Jody Smith, where God literally raised him from the dead because, again, of the prayers of the people and the laying on of hands. Uh, when they laid hands on him and they began to pray, Brother Wayne Brown from Cape Girardeau was one of them. That's the main one, I think, that Jody was talking about at that time that uh, uh, came in and just began to speak some things. To you. He prayed over him and and. I don't know what you didn't see was that Wayne asked Jody, what do you want to see here? When we walk into his room, what do you want to see? And Jody answered and said, I want him to open his eyes. He hadn't opened his eyes in days. And that's all she said. I want him to open his eyes. And they went in there and they prayed. What, and I think even Jody said what seemed like for hours. And they prayed around the bedside. And, and Wayne reached over and laid hands on and began to pray. And then stopped praying. And they started to leave the room. And as they started to walk away from the bed, he just opened his eyes and looked at them. And closed them right back. And then the next time I believe Jody went in, he's sitting up in a chair. Totally, totally confused the doctors and the nurses. Had no idea what was going on. They didn't, they, you know, uh, oxygen levels dropping, and then all of a sudden it begins to rise back up to, to normal and such. And so, Without it, the oxygen, the, it corrected itself amen. when they took the oxygen off. Amen. Makes no sense nope. to, the, to the mind, but God is supernatural. Amen. Amen. And there are many things going on in the spirit realm around us that when we stand in faith, 
God will honor yes. our faith. Yes. Oftentimes, we yes. can't give up. If there is a breath left, and in this case, even I at the point of death itself, mm -hmm. there was still hope Amen. for for the this family. Amen. And we were we were thrilled to see what God's done in their life. You you started sharing something earlier, I think, before the clip, and and that was that you prayed on that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we was in a prayer room there at the church and, and, and just sharing about Bard and, and, you know, we prayed for him for, for days and, and, and all. And, and, uh, but you, you shared that you, uh, believe God that, that he was going to, that he was going to be up yes. and you'd see him by the next Sunday. And I believe if I, if I, my memory serves me correct, that was on Sunday morning, Tuesday is when he actually got dismissed from a discharge from the hospital. And he was at our church on Wednesday night. If I if I remember right, he walked in on a Wednesday night. I was in the pulpit, and he walked in on a Wednesday night service that, that week. night. It was, it was that, week. that week. And, so. and I'm just telling you that <laughs> there is nothing impossible with God. Whatever yeah. trouble time, whatever yeah. problem you're facing, God's got it. If you trust him, if you trust him. And find somebody to join with you in prayer. Go to your pastor. If your pastor doesn't believe in, in, in prayer of agreement, then find you another church. Amen. Because there is such a thing as prayer of agreement. There's power in agreement. Amen. Call somebody. Get with your get with your friends or, or somebody that will agree with you in prayer where the Word of God is concerned that God will meet your need, whatever it is. We've got another another testimony we want to share uh, real quickly here just for a few moments. We've got just a few minutes left on the program. And Brother Howard from Sykeston, uh, was in a terrible car accident as a child. At nine years at old. At nine years old. And uh, his parents both got killed in this car accident. And his uncle, I believe it was a family member that got killed also. And so it was a terrible, terrible situation and terrible time for him in his life. But God intervened. Amen. And I want you to watch this. And we're going to be right back in just a few moments with you take you back 40 years back to when I was just a child you know I, I was raised in East Prairie on Mount Level Farm awesome childhood but one night everything changed about 2 30 in the morning my mother my baby sister my uncle me and my stepdad, we get in the car to go to East Ferrari. My stepdad is inebriated. He's drunk. We start into town. We make it probably about seven miles. My stepdad falls asleep under the wheel, hits a bridge. The car goes 75 feet in the air, hitting the embankment on the side, driving the motor in on my mother, my baby sister, my stepdad, and my uncles passed out in the back seat. This is how awesome God is. That at the age of nine, I was thrown from the vehicle. I come to Brother Jack laying on the ditch bank, not knowing where I'm at. I climb up the ditch bank. I climb back down. I climb up the car, it's laying on its side. I climb up the car, blood all over my face, covered in mud. I can hear my mother moaning, help me, help me. A nine-year-old child. I get back down off the car, I go back up the embankment. I go down to a house that is sitting there, not knowing that if anybody's there or not, right, right. not knowing nothing like that not knowing if they're going to come out with a gun right. or what, you know, an intruder. Yeah. So I bang on the door, a little child banging on the door, and they come to the door, an elderly woman and her husband. Here I am standing there covered in mud, and they ask me, what's wrong? And I tell them that I'm in a wreck down the road. They call the ambulance. The ambulance comes by after a long period of time, passes their house, turns around and comes back. I'm sitting there, my mother, my mom, I want my mama crying. Sure, sure. Come to find out, I go to the hospital, they take me to the hospital. I'm sitting there and my biological dad walks in. I don't normally see this guy except for Christmas. Mm -hmm. He comes in, 
He checks on me. He goes back out. I don't know what to do. I'm sitting there. Then the doctors come in the next day with my dad. I'm laying there, and they said, Howard? I said, yes, sir. They say, your mother's dead. Your baby sister's dead. Your stepdad's dead. Your uncle's dead. You're outside of the car. A paramedic resigned his position that night because he did not know how you got out of the car with the windows locked. The door's locked and the windows rolled up and you're outside of the vehicle. Tell me there's not a God. Hi guys, it's Holly Garces, and I'm so glad that you guys are joining me today with Kingdom Truths for today. This week, we are going to be talking about freedom we have in Jesus. And on my notebook, I really don't have a lot down because when I begin to think about Jesus and I begin to talk about him, I'm at a loss for words, honestly. Um, all I can say is, is that when I met Jesus, I found my freedom. Um, the scripture I'm going to read to you guys today is Psalm 18, 19, and it simply says, He delivered me because he delighted in me. And I love that because um, a little bit of my testimony is I've grown up in church my whole life, and I would constantly be fearful of people's opinions about me and the labels that I had placed on myself or that relationships had placed on me or even just church people would place on me. And I got into this rut of depression and anxiety and hurt and I just, I couldn't see a way out. I would sit in church but I wasn't actually grasping anything that was being preached. I would raise my hands but I wasn't really worshiping. And one night I remember I was on the praise team and we were practicing a song called, um, Break Every Chain. That's what it is. My mind went blank. It was called Break Every Chain by Jesus Culture. And I remember going into the back after practice and crying because I couldn't get into that song. I wanted to so bad. I wanted to actually be free. I wanted to actually worship God like I knew I was supposed to, like I knew I wanted to, but I just couldn't. So I remember I went to my dad's office and I went in his bathroom and I was crying and I said, you know, God, if you really are this chain breaking God that you are, I want you to meet me right where I am. And I want you just to break every chain off of me. And that service went a little crazy. We actually opened up with that song, and it wasn't two seconds into that song, and I was just bawling and just totally transformed by the goodness of the Father. And ever since then, my life has never, ever, 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 ever been the same. It changed who I dated. It changed my job. It changed everything about me. And that's what happens when you have an encounter with God. Nothing stays the same. You know, when Jacob had an encounter with God, he walked differently after that. He walked with a limp. And that limp set him apart. That said, hey, he wrestled with God. He met God that night. So I firmly believe that when you meet Jesus, you're never the same. When you truly meet the chain breaker, you don't pick up anxiety. You know, the worst thing about a Christian is, is that they go to pick up the same thing that God set them free from. And I think that can break God's heart because here he is dying on Calvary for you, and then you choose to go pick up that nicotine habit, or you choose to go sleep with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or you choose to go watch porn, or you choose to drink that drink. He sets you free from that. So when you truly meet him, there's no excuse. It's either your choice to either serve him or just serve yourself. So I truly believe that when you truly meet Jesus, the chain breaker, everything changes. Um, Psalm 18, 19, where it says, you know, he delivered me because he delighted in me. I love that because it doesn't say he delivered me because I did everything correct. And it doesn't say he delivered me because I followed A, B, and C. It doesn't say he delivered me because I'm worthy. But here's the thing. He is worthy. And that's why he delivered me. Because it's his character. It's his kindness. It's his justness. It's everything about him. He saw something way deep on the inside of me that said, hey, she's worth the fight. So I just want you to be encouraged that you might be struggling with a porn addiction. You might be struggling with alcoholism. You might be struggling with a nicotine habit. But guess what? No one has lost hope on you. And I don't want you to lose hope on yourself. 
But there is a God in heaven that sees you right where you are and sees all the chains that you have on you. He sees the chain of depression. He sees the chain of anxiety. He sees the chain of fear, and he just wants to break them off of you. But you have to be willing to let him. When we simply humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, that's when he heals our lands. That's when he forgives our sin. So when you fully give yourself over to God, that's when he can do the miraculous. Just like the woman with the alabaster box. You know, she walked in. She was a street hooker, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on camera, but I will. She was a street hooker. And she walked into Jesus' party dinner, and she simply broke open her box on Jesus. That was something that back then you didn't do. That was that box was saved for her wedding night. And she did something out of the ordinary. She added the box. She broke open the box. And she poured out all she could on Jesus. And that's when he moved on her life. So when you break open everything you have on the king, that's when he can break your chains. So I just want you guys to be encouraged that you have not lost hope. God has not forgotten about you. And he will forgive you. And he will break every chain off of you. So I just want you to be encouraged that there is hope and there is a chain breaker that loves you. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Hi, I'm Greg Gilberto. It's Kingman News Now. And it's absolutely time to testify. Brother Jack, I love Brother Howard. Amen. He is a blessing to me. We're in service with him often. And he he just loves the Lord. Yes. And I, I love to see him worship. I love to see what God's done in his life. He's overcome Amen. so many obstacles in his life. And he's a hope to me. If he could get through the kind of things that he's been through, I know that Amen. God, the word says, God is no respecter of That's persons. Right. Amen. What that means is if he has done something for Howard or for me, he'll do it for Amen. you yes. as well. He's a righteous God. Amen. He, he's always able to do what is right and what is fair. And, and I love him today. Sometimes, you know, our circumstances don't look like that. They look like, where are you, God? Where, where are you? The hour is late and I need you now. But you know, when our heart is moved with faith and we just won't give up Amen. when we don't turn loose. Amen. I was thinking about the prayers a little bit ago that we uh, were looking at. And, and I thought, um, you know, sometimes people think that we have to beg God. And I want to say to you tonight that we don't have to Amen. beg That's right. God at all. That's right. He wants to do the things that he's promised you. He wants to bless your life. He wants to get yes. those promises to you. Yes. And the scripture we read in the very beginning was that we are that they are saved by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. I want to go back for just a second and say when our word becomes the word, when we begin to speak in agreement with the word of God, then that puts so much power Amen. for change, for God to come into our life whenever we are in agreement with the word. It's Amen. a powerful, powerful thing. The word also says that out of our bellies yes. shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Yes. I want to tell you that in the years when I felt hopeless and I struggled with depression, the greatest turnaround in my life was to understand that God had a hope and a future yes. and a purpose for my life. And if I could know him enough that I could become a witness to his goodness, to his mercy, that I could rescue others who had suffered, whose hearts were broken. You know, our hearts sometimes are broken in a million pieces. Not the words of any man, not not Come the on. hope of, of other people's uh, words or situations. There was nothing that could put my heart back together Amen. and put hope in my life until Christ. Yes. And when he did that, it was so miraculous that I can't help but want to share that. Amen. Amen. That he's a healer, that, he's a, that he is a God of passion and of love. Amen. And you know what? This world, there is nothing like the spirit of God's love to restore and to repair. And if there ever was a time in our world, in our nation, 
that the love yes, of amen. God was needed. This is the hour. Amen. This is the hour. The word of God says that the whole earth is groaning, groaning. That's right. for the manifestations of the sons of God. The reason for that is because the sons of God are supposed to have an encounter. Amen. They're supposed to know their God. The word says they will know him and they will go forth and do great exploits. Yes, that yes, yes. sounds like a fancy word, but it really just means they'll rise up and take action. Amen. Do something about what's around us. The greatest lie of the devil is that you don't have any power to do anything about the circumstance that you're in. But I'm telling you, your agreement with the Word of God yes. and your testimony about the Word of God will bring life and hope and power in your life that Amen. you only you didn't even think was ever going to be possible. Amen. I just love to hear the testimonies of people. And I'm going to tell you that many times when I was struggling, God would send somebody along with a testimony. And when I would hear them, I could rejoice with them and I could know that I was safe in God's yes. hand, that he could be trusted. Amen. Amen. Somebody <laughs> grab an offering plate. <laughs> Amen. Let's take an offering here. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. What, what you don't know, as I told her before we went on the air tonight, now if you just feel the anointing, you just take off and go. Amen. So I'm glad she does. Amen. She don't let nothing hold her back, and that's awesome. That's what we, we all ought to be. Amen. And talking about the Word of God. Uh, you know, you alluded to something just a few moments ago about, about what somebody else thought about it, you know, mm -hmm. that, that it doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. You know, because... Someone's opinion can never change another person's experience. That's right. Just because they disagree with you doesn't mean your experience That's didn't right. happen. You know, just because they don't understand it didn't mean that doesn't mean that your uh, that your experience didn't take place. So we're here to tell you tonight that whatever it is that God has done for you, it's time to testify. <laughs> Amen. Now you see different people on our program sharing as we come on the air and during, throughout the program you'll see somebody say you're watching Kingdom News now it's time to testify because we believe if that's what time it is. We believe there's lots of things taking place as you've said what, just a few moments ago. Lots of things going on in the world today. Yes. Lots of bad news everywhere. Right. Everywhere. But it's time that the body of Christ comes together and stands up together, united as the body of Christ, not as a denominational church, but as the body of Christ, and begins to testify of the goodness of God and what he's done for the people, for them. Amen. And so we encourage you tonight, get on the phone, call somebody, share with them what Christ has done for you. You may be, and, and let me share with you, someone was in a place of business that I seen just a few weeks ago. We've got about two minutes left. Let me share this real quickly. Someone come up to me and said, I see, I watch Kingdom News now. I see your program all the time. And I said, well, thank you. Hopefully it's a blessing to you. And and what it, where it was, they're an employee at Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center. And he told me, he said, you go by lots of rooms and your program's playing on their on their television in the room. So let me tell you, if you're in the hospital tonight and you're laying in a hospital bed, amen, just like Bart Smith was, and the enemy, and 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 not, when I say the enemy, I don't mean doctors are our enemy, but but the doctors have come to uh, come to you and told you there's no hope. I'm telling you there's still hope. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ paid a price on Calvary that you can get up and walk out of that hospital room, healed and made whole. Amen. And so I want, uh, will you pray? I want you to pray for the people that's watching tonight. Okay. Amen. We've got about a minute and a half. Amen. And I want you to <laughs> <laughs> and, and just, just pray what's on your heart tonight for the people Ooh, that's watching. <laughs> I can hardly say my name in a minute and a half. <laughs> I'll be glad to pray. Father, we just thank you for our audience and those who, who turn into this program. Father, I trust you that their footsteps have been ordered by you. That if they're watching this program, it's not by mistake that they're here. Yes. Father, I just send forth your spirit through the through the television screen, Father God, that you would reach out, that you would surround them with ministering angels and ministering spirits. Yes. Help them to understand, Father, the, the depth and the breadth of your love, the length and the Father, that, yes. that it just encompasses everything yes. about us if we will let it come. And if we will invite you, 
Father, I pray that you minister to their hearts today. Father, that you give them good, godly people around them that will stand firm with them yes. and believe with them and see Thank you, you move in the midst of their situation. Father, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And God, I just thank you for testimonies that you'll get the glory yes. all over, Father, with the testimonies of those who have yes. received Hallelujah. what your spirit has, has spoken to them today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And don't forget, when Satan has a plan to kick you out, God's got a plan to keep you in. Amen. God bless you. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love there's no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here